Armando Hasurungan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasurungan. And here you can also like. And you can also ask questions, answer some questions, please, and post some interesting things such as artworks would be appreciated. And in this video, we will talk about gases, the chemistry of gases. So we begin with the states of matter. And where does and where is gas here? Well, solid can go to liquid. And then liquid, if we boil it up, can produce gas, such as if we are boiling water, gas comes out. So let's just say we have a container here, a square, filled with gas particles. We have two types of gas particles, and they're all moving around here. Now, gas molecules, or atoms, are able to freely move within a container. So they just keep moving around. And the attractive forces between gas molecules are very low. So they don't really have any attractions between each other. Now let's just uh, have another container, this time with just one type of gas particle. Now gas, gas, gases, strikes surface which will then exert force. Gas within a container will strike um, the surface therein and will exert some form of force. And this collective result of these collisions is called pressure. So now gas has four major properties. One of which I just mentioned, pressure. When the gases strike surfaces, it will exert pressure. Another type of property gas has is volume. Now the volume of gas equals the size of the container, simple enough. So for example, if we had a flat tire and we want to pump it up, if we push this pump, more gas particles will go into the tire, which will increase the volume. So as you can see, pressure and volume are related. And if gas particles go in, it means that the volume will increase. Another type of property gas has is temperature. And temperature, uh, when we deal with gases, is usually measured in Kelvin. And we'll talk about Kelvin later on. But temperature, it's related to kinetics of the gas particles. So for example, if we, if we have increased in temperature, this means that it will increase the pressure and increase the volume. If we have a decrease in temperature, this would decrease the pressure and decrease the volume. So, and we'll talk about this later on again. And the last property of gas is the amount of gas, which is essentially the quantity of gas present in a container. Now, pressure. Pressure we can measure in Pascals, we abbreviate it PA. We can measure atmospheric pressure, one ATM, or just ATM, atmospheric pressure. And we can also measure it uh, commonly in millimeters of mercury. Uh, millimeters um, Hg, the, the element mercury is Hg. So if we do conversions, one atmospheric pressure uh, equates to 760 millimeters, uh, millimeters mercury. And uh, one atmospheric pressure also equals roughly 100,000 pascals. Actually, it's uh, more, more in the lines of 101,300. Now let's look at an example. Let's just say we have a jar containing some gas particles and the gas particle uh, exerts some force and the pressure in this container therefore is 335 millimeters mercury. The question is what is the pressure in pascals and atmospheric pressure? So we know that 760 millimeters mercury is equal to roughly 100,000 pascals or 101,300 pascals. So therefore, to measure pascals, to convert this to pascals, we go 335 millimeters mercury times it by 101,300 pascals divided by 760 millimeters mercury. And then this would give us uh, the amount in pascals, which is 44,651.9 pascals. Okay, let's check if we're right. So we know that about 760 millimeters mercury will equal 100,000 pascals. And we, and, but we have 335, which is about half of 760 millimeters mercury. So therefore, we expect to have half of 100,000 pascals, which we did get. We got 44,651.9 pascals. Now, let's measure, uh, let's convert 335 millimeters mercury to atmospheric pressure. And this is exactly the same because we know that one atmospheric pressure equals 760 millimeters mercury. So therefore, we would go 335 millimeters mercury times it by one atmospheric pressure 
divided by 760 millimeters mercury to give us the amount in atmospheric pressure, which is 0.45 atmospheric pressures. And again, this amount looks correct because, uh, because we have half of 760 millimeters mercury, and therefore we expect to have half of one atmospheric pressure, which is about 0 0.45 atmosphere, at, at, atmospheres. Next, let's look at the relationship between pressure and volume. So for example, we have this container with a piston. And uh, this container obviously has some gas particles within it, which exert some uh, force. And if we push down this piston with one atmospheric pressure, this piston will be um, held on about four liters, let's just say. And so the volume is four liters and the pressure being exerted is one atmospheric pressure. Now, what if we push down on the piston? If we push down the piston to two liters and exert uh, two atmospheric pressure force, this would mean that there's more collision uh, in the container. The gas particles has more collisions. And this means that the volume is, of course, two liters, but the pressure has increased to two atmospheric pressures. And so we can say that, it, that pressure and volume is inversely related. Changes in volume will change pressure. And then this, is, and then we, this brings us to Boyle's Law, which, uh, which is essentially volume is uh, proportional to one half the pressure. So for example, if volume is doubled, this would mean that the pressure is halved. So Boyle's Law can also be expressed as an equation at constant temperature, so only at a constant temperature. And the equation is P1, V1, pressure 1, volume 1, will equal pressure 2, volume 2. And P1, V1 is the initial uh, pressure and volume, and P2, V2 is the final pressure and volume. So for example, if there is an equation, in a 40 liter gas cylinder, the oxygen pressure reads 225.7 atmospheric pressures at 21 degrees. So this is our initial pressure and volume. How many liters would this same gas occupy at a pressure of 12 atmospheres at 21 degrees? So we know that this, this uh, question has to do with the pressure and volume, so we use the same, this equation. And we first have to check if the temperatures are, are constant, which it is. Now P1, pressure 1, the initial pressure, is 25.7 atmospheric pressures. Volume 1, the initial volume, is 40 liters. And pressure 2, the final pressure it, they give it to us, is 12 atmospheric pressures. And what we're trying to find is volume 2, because it asks how many liters. So now we have to rearrange this equation so that we, we, we find V2. And we do it like so. And then we can adjust it again to make it nicer. So V2 equals P1, V1 divided by P2. And all we have to do is just insert the values inside this equation. So 25.7 times 40 liters divided by 12. And this will give us uh, the volume 2, which is 85.6 liters. And I think that's right. So we've looked at Boyle's law, the relationship between volume and pressure. Now let's look at the relationship between volume and temperature. And here we have another container with a piston um, pushing down which we, uh, which stands at two liters, this container, and we have gas particles in there moving around, and we're only exerting one atmospheric pressure. Now to see the relationship between volume and temperature, the pressure and the amount of particles have to be constant. And remember, we are measuring temperature in Kelvins. So for example, this container uh, has a temperature of 200 Kelvins, and the volume of two liters. And if we know that 0 degrees Celsius is equal to 273 Kelvins, this would mean that 200 Kelvins is equal to negative 73 degrees Celsius, which is pretty damn cold. Now, to see the relationship between volume and temperature, what happens if the pressure is still constant, a one atmospheric pressure, and we increase the temperature to 400 Kelvins? This would actually push the piston up to 4 liters. And the volume, therefore, is at 4 liters. And so from this, we can conclude that an increase in temperature will increase the volume. And this brings us to Charles' law, which states that volume V of gas is directly related to temperature uh, when there is no change in pressure 
and the amount of gas particles. Now, therefore, Charles's law can be also uh, expressed as an equation where V1 over temperature 1 is the initial volume and temperature is equal to volume 2 and over temperature 2, which is the final volume and temperature. So if we, for example, have a question uh, following the previous question from Bohr's law, what would the volume of the gas cylinder container be if the temperature had been 28 degrees, assuming there is no change in pressure? So what we're looking at is the final volume and temperature. So if you remember from the other question, the initial volume and temperature was 40 liters and 21 degrees. So therefore, um, we know that V1, volume 1, initial volume, is equal to 40 liters, and temperature 1 is 21 degrees Celsius, but we can't express this in Celsius, we have to convert it to Kelvins. So what we do is we add 21 degrees Celsius plus 273, which will equal 294 Kelvins. And v, volume 2 is the volume of what we're trying to find, because the question asks what would the volume of this cylinder container be. And the temperature 2 is 28 degrees Celsius, because we say with, the question was asking if the temperature had been 28 degrees Celsius. And again, we have to convert 28 degrees Celsius into Kelvin, so we add 273 uh, Kelvins, which will equal 301 uh, Kelvins. I think that's right. And so we put this into the equation, but, we, but before that, we have to rearrange the equation to find V2. So then we, so now we have V2 equal V1 times T2 over T1. And so we then insert the values inside. So we have 40 liters times by 301 Kelvins divided by 294 Kelvins. We cross the Kelvins and we get 41 liters. So the what would the volume of the cylinder container be if it was at 28 degrees? It would be 41 liters. Okay, now what would happen if we combine both these laws together, both Boyle's and Charles's law? Boyle's law is volume is proportional to one half of pressure, and Charles's law is volume is proportional to temperature in some way. Now, if we combine these two gas laws, we will get volume is proportional to temperature over pressure. Or we can write this as an equation, P1 times V1 divided by T1, which e equals uh, P2 times V2 over temp T2, uh, where P where all the ones are the initial and all the twos are the final. Now, an important key note to know is the standard temperature and pressure of gas, which is defined as zero degrees or 273.15 Kelvins, and the pressure is 760 millimeters mercury, or one or one atmospheric pressure, or 101,300 pascals, and that's the standard temperature and pressure of gas, abbreviated STP. Now. Let's look at a sample question. Um, let's just say a sample of gas has a volume of 800 milliliters, uh, milliliters at 45 degrees Celsius and 1.5 atmospheric pressures. What is the volume of gas at a, the standard temperature and pressure? We know that the standard temperature and pressure of gas is about 0 degrees Celsius and 1 atmospheric, atmospheric pressure. So, we are actually finding the final volume here because it's asking what is the volume. So volume one is 800 milliliters, pressure one is 1.5 atmospheric pressures, temperature one is 45 degrees Celsius because that's what we begin with, but we have to convert this to Kelvin so it becomes 318.15 Kelvins. And we're trying to find volume two. Now, what is the volume of gas at STP? So we the pressure two and temperature two have to be at STP, so pressure two is at one atmospheric pressure because we're using atmospheres and temperature two is at uh, zero degrees Celsius but we convert it to Kelvin so it's 273.15 Kelvins. Now we use this uh, the combined gas law of Boyle's and Charles and we just have to re rearrange this to find volume two. This is what we get. V2 equals V1 times P1 over P2 times T2 over T1. And so therefore, we just have to enter all these values in this equation. So we get volume 2 equals 800 times 1.5 divided by 1 times 273.15 divided by 318.15, which gives us, in milliliters, 130 
130,000.27 milliliters. All right, so now we've already looked at the changes in pressure, temperature, and volume. But how about the amount, N, of the particles? Now, this is where Avogadro's law comes in. And if you remember, it talks about the mole. But in the gases, one mole of any gas has the same number of moles in a standard temperature and pressure condition. What this means is, if I just draw a picture about it, let's just say we have three balloons filled with three different types of gases at standard uh, te temperature pressure. So we're talking about 273.15 kelvins or zero degrees Celsius and the pressure of one atmospheric pressure. And let's just say in balloon one we have one mole of oxygen gas, O2. This would mean that the molar mass is 32 grams of O2. And in balloon two we have one mole of nitrogen gas, N2. This would mean that the molar mass, because we have two nitrogens, is 28 grams for nitrogen. And then for and then in balloon three we have one mole of hydrogen gas, which means that we have two grams of um, hydrogen gas. The interesting thing is that they all share the same volume at standard temperature and pressure, which is 22.4 liters. So whatever type of gas it is, if it's at standard temperature and pressure, they all will share the same volume, which is 22.4 liters. Now let's talk about something else. Let's talk about the combined gas law, combining more gas laws. So we talked about combining Charles and Boyle's, Boyle's law, which was P1 times V1 over T1, which will e equals P2 times V2 over T2. And this is at standard temperature and pressure too. But what, what if we combine everything else, including the amount? This would give us what's called the ideal gas law, or ideal gas equation, which is PV equals nRT, where P is pressure, V is volume, N is amount, and R is the constant of proportionality relating to molar volume and temperature or pressure. And this in itself is pretty confusing, but essentially R is a constant. And R is 8.314 joules per mole and Kelvin. And so if we use um, this constant, we means that we have to measure volume in meters cubed and the N in moles. And uh, finally for T, which is temperature, we measure it with Kelvin. Now, we can actually calculate pressure, volume, or amount, or temperature, of a gas given that we have three of the four quantities. So for example, if we're given P, V, and T, we can, ca we can calculate N, which is amount. Because remember, R is a constant, it's always there. And if, for example, again, if we want to calculate volume, we have to be given P, N, and T. And that concludes the first part of the gas uh, chemistry. Uh, next, we'll look at the ideal gas law and also partial pressure. Please like, comment, and share. Thank you.